those okay. office hours and so that members can see to them. Yeah. Um, so we also have well. our team offering office okay. hours. So, so I mean, myself, from executive director to myself, yeah, operations, if you need help with you know, operations for your organization. Our team leads, um, if you need some kind of market research done for your product, or if you need to Sorry. test your product in our user experience lab, then we do offer. Um, mm. Some of the, the office hours will be free, but the moment it gets into, you know, like the testing and the market research, um, we would we would um, talk about a very subsidized rate for our staffs. Yeah, so that's just some of the stuff that you get as a member of the I help. Thank you. Maria, I'll start off with a with a quick answer to the question that was asked, and also maybe add on to what was said. Um, if you are a, a woman entrepreneur, uh, we as Microsoft are looking to support you both from a technical but also from a go-to-market strategy. We provide funding to select startups. Um, we funded a number of startups out of Kenya. So if you are interested, please let us know and I think that's something that we can follow up with. I think on your question of, you know, how do you get to and, and how do you sort of sustain? Um, I have, for me, and, and this is my sort of working mantra, is tenacity. You need to have tenacity as a woman, but also because you are passionate for what you do. And I think that the, the second thing that hasn't been mentioned so far is be good at what you do. I mean, being a woman is not sufficient. And, and I think that's the hard truth of it. And as, and as great as it is that we can all go, you know, powwow, uh, be good at what you do. Excel. You know, create the center of excellence for the business that you drive. Know your stuff. Know it well. Show it. Demonstrate it. Have the, the courage the, to display it, to share it, but at the core of it, be good at what you do and be very excellent at communicating it. I think just uh, building up on that, the one thing that I would, you need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to be, you, you need to be open to change and willing to adapt you will be thrown into very, you know, a lot of situations that will require you to act fast and adapt to it. That's, that's my, that, that, that's my key advice. Uh, I like to call it, do it afraid. <laughs> so that, that's, that's one of the greatest lessons. So I've, I've, I've been a founder, co-founder of 21 businesses, uh, Silicon Valley, most of them, three nonprofits, starting the fourth nonprofit uh, right now. And um, that's, that's number one, do it afraid because you're never going to know everything. You're never going to have all the information. You're never going to be able to collect it all. You just got to take that, what you do have, because you know more than you know you know, and go forward. Uh, I have another uh, lesson I've learned with, involved with uh, a lot of startups and, and working with uh, thousands of startups now. Um, just wait five minutes. The world can change. Sometimes, <laughs> and this is true, if, you know, you could be sitting there and not know how you're going to make payroll, how you're going to, you know, move to the next level, what clients you've got. You just lost a client. All of a sudden, you've got a new client. I literally went from a situation where we were going to close down a business, 65 employees, uh, and the next, within five minutes, had $500,000. Just five minutes, right? And that's that's something that's really important. And then, it's it's a consistent thing, but it's 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 never, ever give up. And persistence and consistency are key in that. Because as a startup, more and more people are aware of startups, so they're more leery of startups because they've been burned by hiring startups or, or, or bringing them on board, and then the startup doesn't survive. And then they're left high and dry. So businesses are more attuned to startups and new businesses. While that's an advantage in many cases, at the same time, there's got to be persistence and consistency, consistency being part of it. So, Many times you can be building relationships and moving towards sales, and it can take a year to get that sale because they want to see that you're going to be in business in a year, and so your persistence and consistency will help close those deals. So just know that that, that is critical, consistency and persistence. Um, so I, I try and avoid too many me too isms, but, um, but I, I think the embracing, actually I was gonna say, um, unlike something that, that Lynette had said earlier, I think that discomfort, that is something to embrace um, and I think to work through it <clears throat> because sometimes I think um, your purpose um, and the thing that you're meant to do and, and that feeling of what's right actually sits smack in the middle of that discomfort 
Um, if I was to add anything else, I think one of the lessons that I learned um, from someone that I'm, I continue to um, be quite close to many years on is um, have a board of directors because sometimes you can you can get stuck in your head <laughs> trying to sort things out, trying to figure it out, but sort of go look look to the people who you that inspire you, look to the people who um, know you well, look to the people who push you, um, and create that board of directors and and go to them often, particularly when you're in that moment of discomfort. Um, mine would be three things that are very related. One is your network, is your network. So make sure you're building an amazing network. Uh, you know, the kinds of people, when I started a bit of, you know, business, I had these people I told, if it doesn't work out, you know, I'll come into work for you. Um, then two, um, you know, have people who support you, you know, people who bring you down. So surround yourself with, you know, good friends, with people who are, you know, have your best interest and have people who would be sitting here and you're not and they say hey you, you need to speak to this person uh, i once met uh, dr wanjiru kamau and she told me she carries around her husband's business cards it was so interesting and she said you know if i meet someone who isaac can benefit from i give them isaac's card you know have those kinds of people in your life people who market you and then um three is have a diverse kind of network. Meet chefs, you know, uh, meet people who are way older than you, meet people who are younger than you, meet people who are, you know, not your gender, meet different people. You never know what you learn from them. Um, at least you, you get to see the world in a very different way, from very different experiences. And I think that, you know, she's saying that you're not stuck in just your ideas, you get to have a broader network. Um, what I would add to that is, I think someone mentioned passion before, but still on that, following your passion is so important because entrepreneurship is not an easy journey and there'll be a lot of bumps in the road. And if you're doing something that maybe looked like a quick cash cow or something that was trendy at the time, when you hit that there are patches, it'd be very difficult to stay engaged. So when you do something that you're passionate about, it's much easier to get through the tough times, but make sure it's within reason. Like whatever you're doing for your passion is has a market viability or you're solving a real problem just intertwine it with your passion and then secondly another thing is planning so the reason i say this is because sometimes you can have a goal for your business so your you know this big huge overwhelming vision but if you actually make a plan on a week by week basis and you hit those goals and hit those targets that satisfaction and that pride that you take in having you know hit those small milestones will fuel you to going you know working towards that bigger goal and then the last thing is about confidence so as a woman you have to have actually extra confidence because you have to have be able to walk into a room ignore some of those looks you know those we talked about like who is she what is she doing here and ignore the little voice that's in your head probably that's you know nagging you and saying you can't do it you don't deserve it whatever it is so you have to have extra confidence and something that i do and i don't know if this sounds a bit cookie but i like wrote a letter to my future self like talking about what i have achieved and sometimes when i feel you know low confidence, or I'm down, something has happened, I'm just like, you know, why am I here? What am I doing? Am I lost? I actually like take out that letter and read it and it sort of brings me back. And I sort of, I find myself again and, and regain some of that lost confidence because it's not that easy, you know, to remain confident and, you know, just complete, consistently at that level of, you know, self-assurance, yeah. So that's something I'd say, you have to just like, check on. One last one. <coughs> um, hi everyone. I think I have like three questions. I don't know about the last <laughs> I have two questions for you, you Sean. Um, with regards to represent, uh, you just mentioned how your post come to Kenya in a big way. Um, I would like to um, ask you're coming to a country that already has um, logistical issues, environmental issues that have led to the reason as to why women are not so up for the technology. What plans do you have with regards to um, enabling the weekly week center to, uh, to um, empower the women who literally have logistical issues? They have the drive, they have, they have, you know, they have the will, but because of logistical issues, environmental issues, people in different counties, how are you going to track that? Um, how are you going to help us? And how are you going to do that in a, like, in a faster way than just, you know, the normal way for women to come to us? Because the most problems we have is you have to come to the forum to get the, the to get the skills, to get the knowledge. How, how are you planning on um, going to the to the outcasts of our country? And another question, um, it's 
I, I, I just recently went home like last week and I was just thinking about a computer my mom had bought for me like seven years ago. I was done with it, I've upgraded. So I was like, Mom, have your laptop back. So she's like, Oh, you know, I want to learn computers now. And she's like, in, She's 56. And I just looked at her and she's like, Yeah, but please you just invest in me, teach me, because I already know how to use Skype and that's computer enough. I'm thinking, No, that is not computer enough. So I felt there is a need there. She's at, she's age, um, at, uh, age group of 50 and, up and above. So, is there, are there programs that are helping women of such age? Because we are hearing of all these, all these initiatives empowering like women who are 14, young girls. What about the women who actually are the entrepreneurs of this country and they are not really young, but they still want to catch up their changing times? So, they may not have so many years, but they have 10 to 15. But are there platforms of women <laughs> in technology? <laughs> are there platforms that are going to empower women who are above 14 years? So I'm going to start. I'm going to start with your second question. Um, so statistically, what we see is, on average, um, the entrepreneurs that are successfully starting or building businesses are between 20 and 65, and those are ones that go through our program. Um, a majority of the ones who are older, um, and I'm getting there myself. When who brought up a television show or something here? It's just reminded me of uh, what I um, yeah and so uh, so we put a lot of energy into supporting uh, women at any age any background any education level um, and what we find is women who are older creating new and let's say 50 plus are creating new career paths so we we've had um, women who are doing pickled mushrooms and start distributing pickled mushrooms in the grocery stores and, 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 get, and then part of what we do is helping integrate women into the supply chains so working with corporations to help support the diversity um, uh, of, of the uh, women in the supply chain, but also helping work with women who are in agriculture, going to your point, who are, who are, who are raising, who are growing tomatoes, then plugging them into the tomato dryer, the person who's creating dried tomatoes. Um, and this is a case in Zambia. So we're helping with the women entrepreneurs in the rural, more rural parts of the uh, country who are growing tomatoes, plug them into uh, the lady who is um, uh, drying tomatoes and then distributing those globally. And so um, so that's part of what we do. So just so you understand, we see in entrepreneurs who are younger than 20 less likely to be successful at building a business that's successful and sustainable right now. That doesn't mean that they won't, so keep that in mind. You, and, but we, that's where we find sustain, uh, that's where we find serial entrepreneurs. It doesn't work the first time, they try again. Eventually they get enough barnacles and life experience that they can actually build a business. This isn't saying you can't do it when you're younger. I, please don't, don't, but it's statistically factual. And we see uh, women and entrepreneurs who are older, 50s, 60s, being very successful because they bring in tons of life experience. They have massive networks something that was just discussed here, and they're able to run much faster, and they're driven, and it might be legacy, life issues, timing in life, and I, I don't know about that. But anyway, I just want to point out that, that there's a place for your mother we create, again, any type of business idea. And then what we focus on is the technical knowledge, the technical know-how, right? how to build a team, how to design a business model, how to secure customers, how to generate revenue rapidly, um, how to um, build an advisory board uh, and, and a board of directors, but collect people so that you have a network of, of support. Um, we have multiple programs that, that, that in di at the different levels that provide a kind of a vetting process for us. So if you take this room, and let's say these are all aspiring entrepreneurs here, only 35% of them will take action. Only 35% of you will take action. That's statistically factual. So, and then of those 35%, that takes action, only 10 will actually be building a business. So we create centers, our factories. We run massive numbers of entrepreneurs through this process, and then it's a self-selection process. So those entrepreneurs that are the most driven, most uh, most willing, and, and show the most promise to be uh, successful at their business and want to do it, showcase something that we look for, a characteristic that you have in spades, and that's a, oh yeah, I'll show you attitude. You can break that down into F you, however you want to do it. The reality is, if you have a strong F you attitude, you are more likely to be successful as an entrepreneur. And women seem to have that in a lot of ways. That's, that's inspiring because you know I'm all in support of women ruling the world and so but the we create center specifically now when it comes to the rural parts think of us as a startup we are a startup here in Kenya 
we have a long-term strategy, so we have a we, we have a vision on, on long-term, but we work in short three-month periods. Uh, you're talking week to week. We work in three-month chunks, and with a never-ending horizon on the other side. The first thing we have to do here is empower this team to be able to run a we create center, which is all about operations, logistics, and very non-sexy, boring stuff. We call it schlepping, schlep equity. And they've got to put a lot into it. And then once we build up our mentor network and we have a better idea of the type of entrepreneurs we're dealing with and women entrepreneurs within Kenya, we can then start to migrate out. So part of our longer term strategy is satellites and other we create centers throughout Kenya. But we're starting here um, and we want to build a strong foundation that then we can, we can move out from. Uh, thank you for your question. Okay, because of time, I think uh, one panelist can answer the other question. No, no, no. You can talk to him after. Yeah. So, guys, eh, thank you so much. Eh? But before we go, eh, so we give these guys a, a clap, yeah? So, much thank you all. You a lot to us. It's been inspiring. I'd like us to do uh, activity. Let's all stand up. It's not a dancing thing or very technical thing. <laughs> um, who hasn't spoken in the past or next to them? Even you, Kweli. <laughs> so I want you, the person next to you, turn to them and say, Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is. And then you say the most inspiring thing you like to Okay, thank you guys. As we remain standing, because I know you guys must be really tired, yeah? I also want to really thank you all, because this wouldn't be possible without you. And you see, this is just, I think this is what we call the beginning of self right? Everyone, everyone, can you please have your attention? I think this is the beginning of something great. The lady right next to you is great. The lady right next to you could be doing amazing things and you have no idea. And what if you came next month and you sit next to a different lady, right? What if you came next month and you're going to have coffee and then you're sitting next to the event, you can have coffee and you sit next to someone amazing, right? And as Women in Tech Africa, we appreciate having you in our team. And you can, um, you can, um, if you're not registered in Women in Tech Africa, you can go to www.womenintechafrica.org, register and be among our women in tech globally. As we told you, we launched one in London the other day and also in Africa. And you can also email us. We'll, we'll, since I have all your emails, we'll send you an email on the event and what has happened. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to answer. So let's give each other a hand for. Oh, uh, Angie, one second. Sorry. Um, <laughs> not really. So, um, in the spirit of keeping these kind of um, forums or having these kind of discussions, Akiratrix is hosting the second annual African Women in Tech Conference on November 14th. So, just save that date and we'll be sharing more information on that. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, it's been a pleasure having all of you here today. Um, we would have gone on, but of course, people had to go back home uh, tomorrow being a weekday and all. Um, we look forward to having future meetings. We intend to have a major quarterly. <laughs> We intend to have our major yes. quarterly events, uh, but we'll be having monthly events as well. Uh, we intend to work alongside I have and of course uh, work with other organizations and uh, co-working spaces that um, support this kind of activities. So this is not the end of it, but just the beginning. And we know we have uh, a lot of support will, because of what people have been sending to us. So many people wanted to come. We had to stop some people because the event sold out. Uh, the first time we issued tickets, in under two hours, uh, the uh, tickets were sold out. We added uh, more tickets. 
we didn't anticipate a lot of people turning up, but clearly there's a lot of past and hang up for people to network with this kind of platform. So we tend to uh, grow that. Thank you very much to all these amazing people who accepted to give us their time and say to us. They were not paid to give their time it's purely out of a willingness to support this kind of activities. Thank you very much for our speakers today. Uh, someone like Sean, I just saw a post he posted. I didn't know he was in Kenya. Short notice, I said, can you come and meet us? And he said, yes. So really, uh, it just goes to show the kind of support we have. Before we leave, um, I'd like uh, I'd like us to have a photo. So maybe we can someone take a photo. Those who want to carry on interacting uh, can do that. Uh, those who want to know what you will be at liberty to leave at that point in time. Thank you very much for coming. Um,